Alrighty guys, sorry about that. So we left off um, on page 166, so we're gonna finish chapter seven now. Sabrina awoke to a knocking on her bedroom door. She looked over at the clock on the nightstand and realized it was already seven o'clock at night. She had been asleep for more than three hours. Still in her robe, she crawled out of bed and opened the door, and Mr. Canis was waiting on the other side. The family awaits you in the car, he said. I don't feel like going anywhere, she said. The thought of seeing Granny Ralda and Daphne right now made her sick to her stomach. She would just judge, they would just judge her again. Child, this is no invitation, Mr. Canis said. There is work to be done. Where are we going? Mr. Canis took a deep breath. The answer to that question will not change the fact that you are going there. Sabrina closed, closed the door and got dressed, but the fresh clothes didn't do anything to hide the horrible odor coming off her skin. She slept through bath time, bath time and smelt, still, ugh, and now smelled like a catfish. But she knew if she tried to clean up, she would have to face Mr. Canis again. Once her sneakers were tied, she hurried through the empty house, put on her coat and hat, and opened the front door. Granny was waiting outside with her keys, key ring in her hand. Feeling better? She asked. Sabrina nodded. Thankfully, the old woman wasn't har harping on their previous conversation. Good. A nap can do wonders for a person. Hurry along. Everyone else is in the car. Daphne, Elvis, and Puck waited in the back seat, looking warm and well-fed, and the little girl and the dog both refused to look at her when she slid in beside them. They stared out the window and gave her the uh, frostiest of the cold shoulders. Puck, on the other hand, looked at her and laughed. You are in so much trouble, he chuckled, sounding impressed. Where are we going? She asked again. The sheriff needs our help, Granny replied. Mr. Canis th uh, steered through the country road heading towards the elementary school. When we got there, he pulled in the parking lot and Sheriff Hanstead's car was parked nearby. But the portly police van was nowhere to be seen. Everyone piled into the chilly air and the old man once again climbed onto the roof of the car and sat in his meditative posture. If you need anything, please call for me, he said. Thanks, friend. I suspect this visit will have less drama than the last, Granny Rada said. Elvis, stay in the car. Elvis whined, not wanting to be left behind again. Buddy, you can come in with us, but there's a criminal stealing blankets out of the backseat of cars, Daphne warned. He might snatch yours while you're, we're inside. The big dog bit hard on the edge of his blanket and eyed the window suspiciously as the family went into the school. Miss Graham wanted the, uh, made their way to the principal's office. There they found the sheriff sitting in the chair taking notes while Mr. Hamlin paced back and forth. What are they doing here? The principal asked. And when the family stepped through the door. The sheriff asked us to come, Granny explained. The Grimms are excellent at finding people, Hampstead insisted awkwardly. It was obvious that Sabrina was trying to uh, be discreet about the family being deputized. We're happy to help, Granny Relda said. No offense, Relda, but my kid is freezing in, is out in the freezing cold somewhere. I don't need an old woman and two kids. Uh, I need the police department, Hamlin said. I got the best tracking dog in the world in my car, Granny said. I'll take Elvis out over, I'll take Elvis over a hundred police officers any day. We'll find your boy. The police, the principal sat down in the chair and rolled it over in the, uh, to the icy window. It's so cold out there, he whispered. We were chasing Wendell this afternoon, Daphne said. I heard about that, the man responded without turning away from the window. Then you know he is involved with the deaths, Granny said. Hamelin angrily spun around in his seat and pointed his finger at the old woman. He didn't do it. He shouted. I'm in complete agreement. I've spoken to my girls and Miss White, who was present at today's troubling event. I believe the boy is trying to stop the criminals responsible for the ghastly business. Mr. Hamlin shook his head in frustration. He's. One afternoon, we watched an old black and white detective movie on TV together, and he was hooked. Now he's there. Everything's just a mystery. I thought it was just a phase for him. I never suspected it would get himself into trouble. So he's a detective just like us, Daphne asked. He 
also seems to have picked up his father's flair for music, Green Yoda said. I hear, a, I hear, a, I hear a harmonica is his instrument of choice. He can control animals with it. Hamlin sank into his seat, looking defeated. Relda, he's a good kid, he said. I know there, there was a reason I didn't like him, Puck mumbled. Sabrina couldn't help but roll her eyes. A good kid wouldn't, uh, wouldn't zombify a forest full of rabbits and send them chasing after children. And then there was a knock on the door, and Mr. Sheep Sheep's Shank popped his head into the room. I'm sorry to interrupt, he said, pointing to this wrist stretch on his freckled arm. Miss Hamlin, we have a meeting. Sheepshanks, my son is missing, the principal shouted angrily. Sabrina turned to look at the rosy-cheeked man who smiled nervously. Of course, we can talk later, he said. Closed the door and was gone, and Mr. Ham Mr. Hamlin, Daphne said, we don't want you to worry. We'll find your son and bring him back to you. Granny smiled at the little girl. Relda, I know I've had a history with your family. Henry and I traded a few punches back in the day, and Basil, well, he and I never saw eye to eye, the principal said. I think, um, I'd like to think we're not too, uh, we're too far along to start over. We're not too far along to start over, Granny said, extending her hand. Hamlin stared at it for a moment. You'll help me? Hamlin asked, taking her hand and giving it a vigorous shake. I think I had your family all wrong, Grilda. We're Grams and that's what we do, Daphne said, and then stood to shake Hamlin's hand as well. Afterwards, she reached down, yanked her off her on her belt, and pulled her pants up. Pulled her pants up. Sabrina almost burst out, burst out into laughter, but quickly stopped herself when Sheriff Hampstead, his angry face, told her he recognized the little girl's impression. <laughs> protecting, uh, protecting, and serving is how we roll. How can I help? Hamlin asked. We can start with Wendell's locker number. Granny said. The principal punched a key on his desktop and the screen lit up. He typed a few strokes and smiled. He's number three, two, three. That's right around the corner near the boiler room. Shall we uh, show you the way? No, please wait here, the sheriff said as he stood up. We'll call you as soon as we know something. Hamstead and the family walked out of the office and down the hall until he found locker 323, 323 right where the principal uh, told them it would be. Do you have a kind of magic that opens the door? Sabrina asked as she eyed the combination lock on the door. Granny opened her bag and pulled out a hammer. I wouldn't call it magic exactly, uh, she said, handing the hammer to Puck. The boy grinned, raised the hammer high to his head and brought it down hard on the lock with a uh, which snapped in two. Can I do, the, uh, uh, do another, he asked, but the old woman snatched the hammer out of his hand and placed it back in her handbag. Then she tossed the broken pieces of the lock on the floor and opened the locker. Inside was uh, Wendell's winter coat. Granny pulled it out and tucked it underneath her arm. I really appreciate this, the sheriff said. One cop can't keep the piece of this, a town this size. Don't think twice about it, the old woman said. Back in the parking lot, the Grimms and Pup found Mr. Canis, where he, they had left him. We're heading to the forest, Granny said opening the back door and letting Elvis out. Why don't you stay here in case Wendell wanders back to school? Are you sure you won't be needing me? The old man asked. I've got a handle on this one, Granny Elda replied. Can I ask you a question, Mr. Canis? Daphne asked. Of course, little one. What do you think about when you're sitting on top of the car? Mr. Canis thought for a moment and then looked up at the moon, now high over the nearby forest. I concentrate on all the people I hurt when I was unable to control myself. And that helps you stay calm, Sabrina asked. No, no child, but it gives me a reason to try, he replied. Sabrina didn't know a lot about fairy tale stories. Her dad used to say fairy tales were pointless. When other kids were reading about the Little Mermaid and Beauty and the Beast, her father was discussing the news with his daughters or reading the Sunday comics using different voices for characters. Sabrina and Daphne did their fairy tale reading on the sly or in school. Still, everyone knew the story of Little Red Riding Hood, and as Sabrina looked at Mr. Canis, a terrible realization ran through her. This man sitting on the car roof uh, was 
who uh, slept across the hall from them that night had killed an old woman once upon a time. Only it wasn't a story that really happened. He had uh, tried to eat eat a child, too. How could Cranny, Granny let him live in the house? Granny was holding w Wendell's winter coat under Elvis's nose. The giant dog took a deep uh, lungful and soon trotting across the and soon trotting across the school lawn, sniffing ma madly at the grass. Look, looks like he's got a scent, livelings, Granny said. Let's go find Wendell. Alrighty, guys, I hope you enjoyed Chapter 7. I wonder if they're going to find Wendell. I wonder if Wendell's going to be guilty or innocent. And who are these monsters that are just terrorizing the elementary school?